Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Extra Podcast, the 10 minute show for the gardener on the go. I'm your host, Joey Bear, and alongside is my wife and co host, Holly Bear. This show is dedicated to the home gardener who wants to grow more food or is never grown at all and wants to learn. This program is sponsored in part by DollarSeed.com for your flowers, vegetables, and herbs. All organic seeds, all only a dollar a pack. DollarSeed.com. And WillowSpringSoap.com. Handmade soaps using the cold kettle process while using traditional methods. WillowSpringSoap.com. ManureTea.com. Authentic Haven Burn, 100% natural soil conditioner for your flowers, vegetables, and herbs. Always free shipping at ManureTea.com. And for more information and previous podcasts, you can visit our website at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. So today we're going to talk about seeds that you can start indoors to extend your growing season and ones that are not so good for starting indoors. Right. You want to start your seeds inside to get a jump start on them so you can get some established growth before you place them in the ground, whether you're placing cool weather crops in the ground or warm weather or hot weather crops in the ground. Obviously, let's start off with tomatoes. Yes, tomatoes are easily started as seeds indoors. You don't have to, but I know when as when I, as I was growing up, we just put ours and our seeds in the ground. Usually after Memorial Day or around Memorial Day weekend, when we when we knew we were outside of the frost. But it does give you about a 30 day jump if you do start them ahead of time. Now this is only for those of you who have the availability in your residence to have a place to start seeds, whether it's a window sill and mini greenhouse by a window, a radiator, or growing lights. If you have the space available to do so, and if you do, it greatly increases the the speed that your garden starts producing vegetables and fruits during the summer months. Another thing you can start inside that works very well is peppers. Peppers can be started very easily inside, and as they get older and larger, if you started them too soon, you can clip them or prune them back, cut them in half the top off of them, and they'll allow them to bush out more and produce more fruit when the plant gets to, and reaches maturity when you get it out in the garden, approximately when the temperatures are 75 de- 70 or 75 degrees or above, and the danger of frost and cold nights has passed. And another one we have is onions. Onions, we've done that on our YouTube series that you can find at our website under the YouTube channel. We started onions from seed. As they get taller or lankier and they start falling over, we can trim them back, cut them you know, an inch or two off the top, and that will allow the stalks to strengthen, the roots to strengthen, and to get a bigger growth on that stalk. Now, you could buy them at your local home and garden center if you so choose to, but you're going to save money by getting them started inside if you have the space available on your own. From seed. Another one, one that you don't want to start inside would be root vegetables. Any type of root vegetables, right. You're talking your beets, your rutabagas, your turnips, your radishes, radishes anything like that. It's not recommended and it does not work. You, you can fiddle with it. You can experiment with it by maybe starting them in a half of a paper towel to, you know, cut two or three inches. It, it's you know, more work than what it is, it's worth. You just go ahead and put them in the ground. A lot of these root vegetables, your, your rutabagas, your radishes, your turnips are cool weather crops that you'll be able to plant very early as soon as the soil can be worked and you can get them established and they're going to grow just fine by putting the seed in the ground. Another good one that you can start by start early would be squash and that includes zucchini you know your winter squashes even your pumpkins your pumpkins now the only thing you want to look at winter squash is your viney squash so if you're going to start them you're going to have to be you know planned out to where if you're going to plant it two weeks from now yeah you can go ahead and get that plant started and established and get it germinated but you don't want to start it you know two months before you put it in the ground because you are all very viney plants and they'll begin to vine pretty heavily as they're young so you don't want to you know start them too early because they don't transplant that easily when they've got a lot of growth on them. And like I said, you can start the zucchini. You can start that around Memorial Day time in your garden just from seed and you'll have plenty of zucchini. Oh yeah. You know, halfway through the 55 days maturity on the zucchini. Mm -hmm. You'll be fine. Now you can, you know, we'll talk about this in a a later show, but you can put a dome over it or, or some kind of like greenhouse in the garden to get that plant growing even sooner, but that's for a later show. Some other things you want to avoid from starting from seed that do not transplant well at all if uh, is peas and bush beans, green beans, pole beans. Now what you can do to accelerate the germination process is soak them for two or three hours prior to planting. This is for the beans and the peas. Soak them in manure tea for two or three hours. Allow them to absorb that nutritional value from that compost tea and then you can go ahead and plant them and that will actually speed up germination by up to three days in the garden. So you can start those, germinate, have them start the germination, which isn't such a bad idea. Another one people don't think of and it helps your garden you're not necessarily going to eat it, but it attracts the bees to your garden is flowers. Flowers can be a very beneficial aspect to a garden 
if the space is available to you. Well, and, you know, you want to do a little mathematical calendar work when you go starting flowers. For example, if you're tomatoes, you start tomatoes and they take, you know, 85 days to mature and the flowers take 45 days to mature or bloom, you want to start your flowers uh, at the at the time where the flowers and the tomatoes are both going to bloom at the same time. So when the bees come in to pollinate the flowers or get pollen from them, they'll see the flowers on the tomatoes as well. And we put our flowers, we make a small four by four foot bed of flowers in the center of our vegetable garden to entice the bees to fly over the garden to see what's going on before they get to the actual flowers that they're trying to get the pollen from. Otherwise, if you want to plant flowers to get animals to stay away, you could plant marigolds around the edge of your garden. Yeah, that, that seems to work for some people. Other people, they claim that the rabbits eat the marigolds. So it's, mm-hmm. you know, it's whatever works best in your area. So, you know, other things that you want to look at is cucumbers. Cucumbers can be started Again, much like the squash, their viney crop, you want to start them maybe if you're going to plant them at the 1st of June and it's the middle of May, you've got two and a half weeks or so, you can go ahead and start them inside and get some uh, germination, some growth on them, and then put them in the garden, gently transplant them in the garden. At least you've got some growth on them. Or you can just simply put them in the garden by seed and they'll do just fine because you're going to have a, a prolific amount of cucumbers in most cases anyway. Now, if you don't have the room to do this or maybe the time or the space, then don't worry about it. You know, you don't have to do that. But what would you say would be one of the most important ones? Tomatoes would be a very important one. We all like tomatoes. Another one would be peppers. Peppers tend to take longer uh, to grow than a tomato plant. So that would be another one that if you wanted to uh, start early, just get some, you know, two or three pepper plants started. That would be a big benefit to you in the garden when it comes time, you know, because you, the, the fun part about gardening is you always want to have the first tomato or the first pepper, the first mm-hmm. cucumber on the block. Hey, I've got it. You know, I've eat you. So that's something you <laughs> want to look at. You know, peppers would be a very good one to start. Tomatoes would be a very good one to start. And, you know, you can experiment if you want to do the squash, but squash grows very very, very successfully in the garden by seed, and you want to avoid root crops altogether from starting inside. Kohlrabi, if you're a big fan of kohlrabi, you can get those starts at your local home and garden center. You can start them inside, as well as our cool weather crop that can be grown in the garden very early in the season. Another one we didn't touch on was kale, broccoli, cabbage, all the cauliflower, cauliflower. cauliflower. All those kind of cruciferous vegetables. Very easily to start inside once they get, you know, a good size growth on them and put them outside. They are a cool weather crop. They can tolerate some cool weather, not like hard freezes, but they can sustain well, some. Well, cabbage is fine. Right, but it's not going to live whenever it's, you know, 12 degrees outside. Right. So, you know, kale will, uh, at maturity, it will sustain life up to 20 degrees. But, yeah, those can all be started inside. We'll be starting a lot of those inside coming up in the weeks to come here. And they can be placed outside, and you don't have to put a dome over them or nothing. And they'll be very good. They're very cool weather crops, so you want to get them in very early or as early as possible, depending on your region and where you live. Another one um, people don't think about because – you actually start this in the fall, almost like a, a flower bulb would be garlic. We get a lot of questions about that. Garlic is, uh, whether by bulb or by seed, it's uh, planted in the fall and then mulch, whether with straw or leaves or, or whatever you have available there. So I think we covered a good variety of topics here. Yeah, well, you want to, if you have the space available, again, you want to start your seeds and you can start them in many different ways, whether you're starting them in the traditional trays or the peat pots, which you know, if you're going to start them there, you want to rip the peat pot away from them because they don't biodegrade that easily. Uh, the fun solo cup, you could start them in. Mm-hmm. Uh, plastic cups. You want to avoid, from our experience, you want to avoid those paper cups with a plastic film around them. They're, you know, so-called paper cups because it seems like the plants really suffer when they try to grow in those cups. You want to stick with the plastic cups and grow them in that way or the, you know, the, the containers you normally get from the home and garden center. So there's a, just a couple of different ways or the trays you can start seeds inside and you want to keep them watered. You want to keep them next to a light source and you want to plan out when you're going to start them versus when you're going to put them in the garden by, you know, where you live based on how cold it's going to be. If it's going to be cold for the next two months, you probably don't want to start a whole lot of stuff right now if you don't uh, have the space available to store it for long periods of time. I'm Joy Bear. And I'm Holly Bear. And this is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Extra Podcast, a 10-minute show for the gardener on the go, and it's been sponsored in part by DollarSeed.com, WillowSprings.com, and ManureTea.com. For more information and previous podcasts, you can visit us on our website at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com.